All right, today we have an 09 Lancer. This is uh, new to us. This is 2021. We uh, got an actually pretty good deal on it. It only has 100,000 kilometers. Uh, pretty good shape, two sets of tires, drives good, good price. But what it did have was a set of winter tires on it when we bought it. So like every other Mitsubishi Lancer we drove, it all had the uh, tire pressure sensor on. So hidden behind that was another warning we didn't notice. So we'll, uh, I'll pause the camera and I'll go to the inside of the car and I'll show that. All right, we are on the inside of the car. Hopefully that is able to focus decent enough. So we've got the tire pressure warning service required, which never goes away, which is kind of annoying on these cars. You have to press and hold this info button so it goes away and you've got your regular menu however if you notice on the top is that red uh, exclamation point triangle so what that means is it has a timing belt warn warning on the uh, on the service manual so the previous owner clueless didn't know anything about it or they knew about it and sold it as is but still it's only got 100,000 kilometers. We uh, picked up the parts, and that is what we're gonna do today. We are gonna change the timing chain. Sorry, did I say timing belt before? Anyway, timing chain warning. Um, so we're actually just gonna change it. Parts were cheap, 150 bucks for a set, and that's what we're gonna do. So we'll go back out and we'll do that. All right, first we're just gonna go over some of the parts that I ordered for this car. Um, just kind of gonna do an overhaul. I actually have uh, new brakes and rotors that we're gonna do as well. First, we're gonna start off with some uh, good coffee, of course. Uh, there's, I couldn't find a good video on how to do this. There was one, but wasn't in English. Couldn't understand what he was saying. Um, on the Evo X forum, somebody did post a procedure on how to do this. I don't have the shop manual. I do have all the diagrams of how the timing uh, camshaft sprockets are supposed to go as well as the description on how to retorque down the valve cover gasket because that is an important step when you're done. So what I did get was a timing kit which includes the timing chain and the timing chain for the oil pump or it's supposed to. Kind of everything. It's got tensioners, chains, all the guides. It comes as a kit. I think it was like 140 bucks. Pretty good deal. Um, we've got a new oil filter. We've got new spark plugs since we're in there, anyways. Uh, new valve cover gasket. I got the Fel Pro one because that's what they had on the site. New uh, serpentine belt. The one that's on there is actually in pretty good condition, so I'll probably just change it anyways. This is a Gates one. This will last for a long time. I also picked up a new torque wrench because my old one was seized and don't buy a Mastercraft torque wrench. So this is a different brand, uh, 25 to 250 foot pounds. We've got some oil, some engine treatment, brake clean, uh, RTV that we're going to be using. So just kind of a general overhaul. I've got a new air filter we will put in as well at the same time. So have some coffee and let's get to it. Okay, we've got it up on jack stands. Uh, there's actually one, it's a frame member here in just off center. I've got another one in behind the wheel on some blocks and on the tire on that side. So before you do take the tire off or anything, just make sure this is not gonna go anywhere. So pretty sturdy, we're good. We'll take the tire off and then we'll take the engine cover off and stuff. All right, the, uh, the plastic cover that was here was just two 10 mil bolts. Pretty easy, it just pops off. We wanna take this center cover off of the valve cover here, which is also a 10 mil. Thank you. 
I almost had the car a little too high to uh, reach all the bolts. So that comes off here. You've got your injector coils here or whatever. So I'm gonna unclip those, unbolt those here and pop those out. Uh, we've got some plastic covers underneath we've got to take off as well. So we'll do that here. next. This is also a 10 mil. I think most of these are all 10s to take the valve cover off as well. So. All right, so from underneath we have two plastic covers. Uh, one goes across almost the whole engine bay and then you've got this one here which is on the inside where the tire was. They're all, it's held on by these little plastic clips. So you just pry that off with a screwdriver so it doesn't really focus. So this little clip button is pushed in and there was one bolt, 10 mil bolt on one of them. And uh, if you're going to get parts at the dealer, get some more of these clips because I broke one and I'm glad I didn't break any more. So, so another couple things that I did was once I took the covers off, it was pretty dusty up here. So I just took some uh, brake clean and just cleaned off around the valve cover so I don't have any dust and debris sort of falling in when we take this valve cover off. But before we get to that, what we're gonna do is just drain the oil. So just like a standard oil change, we're gonna drain the oil. And while I'm down there, I'm just gonna put the new oil filter on anyways and get that out of the way. Then we'll come back up here and look at the valve cover. But before we do that, we might start taking off some of these components here so we don't get any debris again inside the engine itself. Okay, so before we get to the valve cover, going to take the coolant reservoir out and uh, I've actually overfilled it so now the it's it'll probably make a mess um, basically one 12 mil, 12 millimeter bolt here um, gonna unclip the overflow hose here and then just take it out it's gonna make spill probably because there's too much fluid in there uh, the other thing we're gonna do is there's a bolt right here holding on the power steering line to the engine mounts so we're gonna unbolt that to get just so you can move it around. We're not going to take it off. Uh, a couple more clips on the top of the valve cover for the some of the wiring. That's just going to sort of going to have to get in underneath with some pliers. Try and squish that clip out or I don't know what else we're going to do. And then there's another one right here. Just should come off with a, just by pulling it up. Just a little tab you can push and it comes off. Be nice if they did that with these other two but they didn't so we'll do that so get that off next okay got the reservoir out with actually without making a mess was able to tilt it enough uh, so I've got the I unclipped all of the coils here that's just a simple clip uh, these came out just squish the tab and these little clips will come out there's a couple here there's another one here it's just a little it's a little bit different uh, but pull this uh, air thing out, whatever the hell you call it, PCV valve. And then there's another one on this side here. I just took it off of the air intake. Um, I've got it all ready. The one thing you need to do is loosen the nuts on the water pump pulley because we're going to take the pulley off but not take the water pump out. So you don't have to do anything with the coolant that way. So from underneath, you can get to it with a 10 mil wrench pretty easily. So there's three nuts on that or bolts. Uh, loosen those off, don't take it off. And then we wanna take off the belt. So to do that is actually a 16 mil wrench that I don't have and my socket won't fit because there's not enough clearance. So a 5 8 is close enough. It's actually a little bit smaller than a 16 mil. So it's actually a tighter fit and that will fit on the tensioner pulley You'll be able just to loosen that and pull the the belt off pretty easily. That's it. So we'll take the belt off. Um, if you don't have a diagram, probably a good idea just to draw out where that goes, which I'm going to do um, because I didn't actually look it up. So I'm going to draw that out first, then we'll take the belt off. Then we'll actually take the valve cover off and then we're going to rotate the engine from the crank just to make sure everything, how things line up. 
So I wanted to show this quick before I took this off. The um, wiring harness for all the injectors are in there. There's actually these little metal clips they're on. These clips pull out quite easily. So they're just gonna just take some pliers and just wiggle them up. Don't try and get this plastic piece off from underneath. It's easier just to take the metal clips off. So just lift that out. There's two of them. And that's for the wiring harness. Just move that up out of the way. So now everything is clear to get to all the bolts for the valve cover. And that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so I took all of the valve cover bolts off and you don't need this. They're all exactly the same bolt, so it doesn't matter. You just need to know what order to torque them in, in the right order in the two torque sequence thing, so you don't actually need this. Now what uh, I have seen online is getting this off is a bit of a trick, so you have to hammer it off. It, it won't just budge off, like I can't just pry it off my hand. So I'm just going to take a piece of wood, I'll hit here, I'll just knock it here, knock it here, knock it in a few places to try and knock it loose, and uh, get that to come off. So we'll see how that works. is I did not take the spark plugs out. I left those in there. I don't want stuff falling in. Oh, yep, this is, uh, it's on there pretty good. That sounded different. There we go, we got some movement. original seal is stuck to the engine. Let's actually have a quick look at that and see what it looks like. So here's a good opportunity to inspect the inside of your engine. So you're looking at all your lobes here to look for any sort of scratching marks or anything that doesn't look clean. So it's definitely had regular oil changes. It's been maintained. Nothing looks out of the ordinary at all. What you don't want to see is any kind of scratches on any of these lobes. That just means poor maintenance. And uh, looks like a good buy. So, and here is our chain. I can move this by hand. So not cool. Which means it definitely has some issues. There is a way to check from looking down. I don't know how to see if it actually is worn. There's a check way, but let's actually look down and see if we can see something. But I think you have to get to the back of the engine on this side to see it, because that's where the tensioner is. Look down there, nothing looks out of the ordinary, but that does look like the original chain that would have came with it in that configuration. So we will uh, continue on. So with the valve cover off, what I am going to do now is I'm going to pull the old gasket off. We are not going to reuse that, so you can keep it on the side. You're going to compare it to your new one, make sure that it is matching. And before we start doing some alignment checks on the existing setup, we're actually going to pull the spark plugs now because trying to crank the engine over by hand with the spark plugs in there, you're going to have compression in your cylinders and it's going to be a little bit harder. So we'll take all these spark plugs out and then we'll move the camera to this side with some light and we'll just, uh, you know, crank the engine by hand and we'll get some alignment and see where we're at. The other good time to do an inspection is to check the status of your spark plugs and Let's zoom that in on my free t-shirt. See if that zooms. Not great, is it? 
anyways you're looking for that kind of uh, burn pattern on your spark plug it's clean there's no oil a little bit of white burn um, it's not wet very clean so that means engine is running normally so all your spark plugs should look like that we're going to replace them anyway it has 100,000 kilometers on this engine spark plugs are cheap might as well replace them all right 22 mil on the crank and we're just gonna rotate that through So there is a little yellow mark on, uh, we're going to see if we can see it a little easier. Right here, I'm going to keep going around until it lines up with this mark on the chain, which is how we're going to put it back together in the end anyways. So with the, uh, keep going around until we get some. There, we've got one line up, which is right there. Okay, so the other one, can't see it on camera, but there's another yellow mark on this cam, and it is also lining up with one of the painted uh, chain marks. Down in here, you're gonna have a line on the cam as well. That will line up with the line in the block right here. So that is actually, all lined up kind of where we want it we can actually probably go back just a hair yeah. and you want that to be so this one here actually has a, a mark as well you want those two lined up which they are right now Probably can't see that on camera, but you're going to have two marks on the cams. They are, it's not painted, it's actually a an indent. Those two will line up here. You'll have the two painted uh, spots that line up with the marked and painted spots on the chain. So everything is lined up. That's how we want it. Now we want to get the crank pulley off. And when we do that, it's probably gonna turn anyways because it actually turns quite easily. So once we get that off, we'll put the bolt back on and we'll reline it up before we do any more work. So that's where we're gonna stop for now and we'll try and get that uh, crank pulley off. Okay, so before we get further, what I'm gonna do is remove or loosen the uh, crank pulley bolt. So. What I did was I put the engine in gear, then I had my son come out and put his foot on the brake, and then I have a, an electric impact gun, and uh, that bolt came off, no problem. So I just hand tightened it back on, um, so that's loose. The next thing we're going to do is remove this engine mount. So there's uh, the 12 mil bolt here for the power steering line, and if you haven't removed that already, which I will. And then the rest of these are 14s. We will take it off the engine here, as well as the frame. We'll get this out of the way. And then we need to remove all three pulleys. So the two idler pulleys and the tensioner pulley will come off next. And from there, we are going to get the pulley off of the water pump that you already loosened. So before we do any work on the engine mount, we're gonna get our jack underneath to support the engine. Make sure you've got a piece of wood under the um, oil pan and that you're clear and away from the edge where the um, timing chain cover is because you need to have access to that. There are actually some bolts that go through the oil pan into the um, cover, so you need to be able to have access to those. So that'll be next. Okay, so we've got the bolts off for the motor mount, but we can't get it off because of this rigid pipe here for the power steering pump. So you actually have to pry the power steering pump out. With this bolt loose, the rest of the hose is loose enough, but you need to move this out of the way. So I've unplugged it, which is right here. Unplugged it, taken the little clip off. There's three 
12 mil bolts on the bracket through the pulley on this side. So we're just going to take that off. And we're going to pry this out of the way. Where's number three? Okay, so I actually figured it out. So get yourself a persuasion tool and from underneath, it's actually just gonna wiggle up. And we're just gonna move this out of the way without bending anything. Yeah, so that's just gonna sit kinda up and out of the way. Engine come off, which is right here. There, so our engine mount, I just took the whole thing off like this. I didn't take this bolt off. Came off pretty easily, all 14 mil bolts. And we'll set that to the side with our bolts for the um, power steering pump. We'll just make sure that this sits kind of without any pressure on the lines. And we should be okay. What you could do is actually just put it back into place, but that is not gonna go anywhere. So we'll leave that like that. And now we'll look at taking our pulleys off, which we might have to move this out of the way first. So I'll figure out that next. Okay, so we're moving these pulleys. This one was the upper pulley here. It was right here. And since this is a 16 mil normal thread, the tensioner pulley is a reverse thread, so we're going to do that next. And since I actually don't have the uh, the 16 mil wrench, the 5 8 worth, so I, what I did is I put it on here and I just used a second one as uh, leverage. I just locked it in. Little turn, comes off easy. At least it should. Uh, I can check the bearings on it. And it actually was, was pretty smooth, so we'll keep that one. And then we'll uh, get the tensioner pulley off which is really hard to see in there so from what I read online it is a reverse thread I will go double check that before I try to take it off okay so a new plan on the uh, tensioner pulley what I did is I I pried it back put an allen key in the hole to keep it back there's two 12 mil bolts there's one here and there's one further down so we're just going to take the whole pulley off um, take or take the whole tensioner off. Trying to take the pulley off of the tensioner is probably not a great idea. So we're just gonna take the, the tensioner off itself. If you have a new one, great, put it on. Um, this one seems to be in good condition, so we're just gonna put it back on. So two 12 mil bolts, that should come right off. And I'm not gonna film that because it's gonna be hard to get in there. And I found that a deep socket on this wrench will actually fit between that space. So whatever works, I guess. All right, so that tensioner came out pretty well. So here's a closer look at what I did. So when I, when you tension this back, you can put an Allen key into this hole, then you have access to the two bolts. It sits on there like that. Came out pretty easy. Getting to the bottom one is actually easier from the underside. Um, so that just wiggled out through there. Then the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna actually take the engine mount off right here, off of the engine itself. So that looks probably like a, uh, some probably some 14s so we'll take that off as well and then we will get that uh, pulley off of the water pump so that will be next okay engine mount is off so this was on the engine this way you've got uh, three 14s and one 12 a uh, little bit tricky to sort of get the right tool in there but I guess we'll find a way easy to come off All right, so the next piece to come off was the uh, uh, pulley on the water pump. Three small 10 mil little bolts. Uh, they were loosened off. So you can actually, if you lift the engine just a little bit with the jack, you can get your finger in there. It just comes right out pretty easy. And now looks like everything is clear for the, uh, the cover. Um, we still have the crank pulley on, but we loosened it earlier. 
so that will come off easily. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take it back out of gear because I left the car in gear and we'll turn the engine over until we get our alignment back the way we had it before. And then we'll take the pulley off. Okay, we have the cover off. So it took a little bit of prying. Um, I used the handle of a wooden hammer, uh, some other uh, long flathead screwdrivers. Finally gave it the last pop. When you do loosen the nuts from the bottom, there's actually one here. This one, you can loosen, but it doesn't come all the way out because there's a bracket down there. So you kind of just need to loosen that off and then you can sort of take it off to the last minute. Once it finally pops, then it's good. You've got sealant on the inside, right? So it's gonna be all the way around. We're gonna have to clean that all off. So yeah, so we've got that off. We'll clean this off and then we'll have a look at uh, our timing. We'll actually rotate it and have a look and see what's going on. Okay, so what I did next was I removed the tensioner. Um, it wasn't actually that bad. It was only out about probably that far. So what you do is you can take a small screwdriver, just pry that up and then the whole thing will compress in. And then you can put a Allen key or something in there to lock it. But that didn't seem to really work for me because it just sort of just kept pushing out. So I just held it by hand. I'm getting oil all over the car now. And uh, just loosened it to 10 mil bolts. Came off pretty easy. Um, there is oil in there because it's a oil pressure one. So we took that off. The next thing we are going to take off is the upper chain guide, which is right here, two 10 mil bolts as well. I put two um, crescent wrenches on the cams that actually had spot to bolt that just to keep them in place, just in case. The other thing I did for the um, chain cover is I also did another template because these some of these are 10, some are 12, some are shorter than others. You've got four that come up from underneath. There's that fifth one from underneath that you actually can't get all the way out. So that was this mark. Um, and then you've got like a 12 in the middle, a 10 in the middle, and your engine mount holes as well, and one upper one with the bracket. So I made a template to keep them organized. Okay, so we have got the old chain off, and when I pulled the old chain, old chain off, uh, the tension on between the top two actually shifted the top um, cam there a little bit, so just wherever that was sitting, so we'll have to make sure that, that you pull that back, which is why I've got these uh, wrenches on there, so I know that it, it actually moved. So on the new chain, you can see we've got some marks, some, I guess, copper colored marks. You're going to have the two top ones here, and then it's also going to line up with the bottom one on the crank sprocket. There's going to, there's also a tiny little mark. It's basically like a tiny little dot. Um, these ones actually have some paint on it. The bottom one has no paint. It's just a tiny little dot. So we're going to get this on there. Um, but before I do that, the kit actually had new guides. So I'm going to install a new guide on the, the front of the engine and I'll have the new one for the tensioner guide uh, ready to put on after the chain is on. So we'll swap that out first before we put this new chain on. Okay, I'm gonna try and hold the camera and explain how I put this chain on. So I'm glad I had these on because the cams actually shifted and jumped. So getting the chain on, this one is the easiest. Then you gotta line it up over there, hard to see without the light. Then what I did is I actually put the chain on without the guide first because it was really tight, which is what it should be. And then I used a clean clamp to hold it on once I got it on the bottom. And you can see there's a tiny dot where that's lined up. Then I clamped that on to hold it. And then from there, I inserted, installed this guide then um, it still actually jumped off the back 
the back one here. So I use these to sort of hold it together, get this back on. Got the tensioning guide back in. There's one bolt at the top way back over here. And next is we are going to put in the new tensioner. I'll actually take that bottom clamp off. Don't need that anymore. So we'll put the new tensioner in. And this is the new tensioner. And the reason I couldn't get this to go back on the old one and pin it was because the pinhole is actually quite tiny. So don't pull this out. And what we're going to do is we'll go reinstall that. Once it's all lined up, then we'll pull this pin. Um, maybe save this pin. I'll show you how big that is and how big that hole is if you uh, to take the old one out later. Okay, hard part is pretty much done. I'll take these off. All right, we've made sure that uh, double checked, triple checked that all of the uh, marks on the chain line up with the marks on the cam and the crank at the bottom, that tiny little dot. Tensioner is in. We haven't pulled the pin yet. Everything lines up. Uh, we're going to pull the pin now. Uh, we've tightened up all of our guides. Pull the pin and then we'll put the bolt on for the crank and we'll crank it over. Alright, pin is out. Looks good. sure if it's actually in gear or not but it won't really matter because even if it is it's just going to turn one wheel so that turns super easy as it should and it goes normal No, he's not here yet. Uh, we're just gonna crank it over a bunch of times until all the marks line up again. Okay, so finished cranking the engine over probably 10, 15 times at least. And all the chain marks, everything still lines up. Everything is smooth. So now it's reassembly. What, uh, now to put the valve cover, or not, sorry, the valve cover, the uh, timing chain cover back on, we're gonna use some high temp RTD but there's still the old stuff on there. So what I'm gonna do is actually take my gloves off and I'm gonna peel all that old stuff away by hand, being careful not to drop any in the oil pan. So if you do, then you're gonna to have to take the oil pan off later. So maybe what I will do is I will get some saran wrap just to sort of stuff near the bottom there, just to try and prevent anything from getting in there, or even some some rags or paper towels. Rags might be better, some lint-free stuff. So we'll do that. I'm running a little on battery too. Okay, so what we did was, uh, so the timing was all done. We had the guides put in. Uh, the next step after that was cleaning off the timing chain cover and any of the old gasket stuff that was left on the engine. So that took us a while. Uh, high temp RTV on the cover place that in, bolted that back on, and then it's just a matter of reversing all of the parts that you took off. So we did the tensioner first, the bottom pulley, then the engine mount, then the upper pulley, then we uh, put the power steering pump, we bolted that back on, we're just going to put the other clip bolt right here that holds it in place, and after that we are going to put the bottom crankshaft pulley on then the belt, and then the belt cover. All right, we are now done. So we put the reservoir back in. It was probably one of the last things. Make sure all our connections are in. Our, we've got new spark plugs in, coils back on, all plugged in. Uh, we've uh, re-added oil because we drained it originally, so always remember to add the oil in. Rechecked all the bolts. We have no spare parts. We've got no spare bolts, everything is on, and now we are going to give it a start.
Everything looks good. I'm not putting the covers back on right now. Uh, I'm gonna get the wheel back on, get it back level on the floor. A couple of the plastic clips I had for the underneath broke, so I'm gonna get a couple new ones of those before I put the covers back on. And I'm gonna clean this off um, tomorrow, maybe, who knows. And then I'll put the engine covers back on, but we'll drop it down, double check the oil, take it for a drive. <laughs> 